So you're going to do a number of different types of reaction predicting this semester, but we're not going to cover all of them in boot camp, but we're going to cover some of the vital ones that can help get you prepared for what's coming and may hopefully make you a little more comfortable with some of the solutions to geometry that you're going to encounter. These are the bulk of the types of reactions we're going to cover this semester. In this video, I'm specifically going to look at salt hydrolysis and neutralization reactions. In a salt hydrolysis, we have a basic species stealing a proton from water or an acidic species donating a proton. Why do I call this a proton? When you learn about atomic theory and atomic structure, you're going to see that hydrogen has one proton and one electron in its nucleus. When you form a positive ion, such as H+, we call this a cation. Cations are formed by the loss of an electron. We cannot gain or lose anything but electrons in this class. When you reach nuclear chemistry at the end of second semester, we'll deal some other really cool things, but for the bulk of this class, you can only gain or lose your electrons. So if I have a hydrogen atom and I have lost my electron, all that I have left is a proton. So we call H plus a proton. We're also going to discuss neutralization reactions, and these are also known as double replacement reactions where a weak base accepts a proton and acids donate protons. So just real quick salt hydrolysis reactions. We're going to deal with these a lot stronger in second semester and we'll see a little bit more of it this fall. But some salts, and we will talk about what salts are, that's in a different video, so please watch that if you have not already. We discuss what a salt is in the video about electrolytes and about solubility rules, but some salts will actually act like an acid or a base when their dissolved ions steal or donate a proton in solution. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, for example, here I've got NH4+. I could have NH4Cl. This is ammonium chloride. When I dissolve ammonium chloride in water, it is completely soluble and it forms ammonium ions and chloride ions. That ammonium ion though then goes on to react with water and it donates a proton to water. You'll see these written a few different ways. Um, you'll see acids being defined as donating a proton, or um, we have three main definitions we're use for acids. One of them is donating a proton. Here you see it saying that the base is stealing a proton. I say bases are accepting a proton. Same thing. The proton has left the acid and is going to the base. In this case, water is acting as a base because it is accepting a proton. In the other example on this slide, I have F minus. If I had KF, KF is potassium fluoride. KF in solid form, if I dissolve this in water, I'm going to get potassium ions and fluoride ions. That fluoride ion, when put into water, is going to take one of those protons from water and form HF. In this case, F minus is acting as a base. Water 
is acting as an acid. So you see here that water can act as an acid or a base. That is true. Some species can act as one or the other. We will cover that more as we go through the semester, but some compounds can act as both. But a salt hydrolysis reaction, we're going to cover this a lot more in second semester, but you do have to recognize that this can happen. Most of the um, salt hydrolysis in Gen Chem 1 will be able to be figured out based on the question itself. But you may not always see it, so you do have to be aware that this can happen. We also just have straight acid-base neutralization reactions. Again, I mentioned we have three different definitions for what an acid or a base is. The main definition used in Gen Chem 1 is called the Arrhenius definition. The Arrhenius definition of an acid states, a substance that produces H+, or H3O plus in aqueous solution is an acid. What do I mean by H plus or H3O plus? What's really happening here is water is coming along and grabbing one of these protons and forming H3O plus. We use H plus and H3O plus interchangeably. We say they're the same thing. They're not technically the same thing, but they do the same thing in in the reaction that we're looking at, so we treat them as the same thing. A base is defined as the substance that produces hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. So water can actually act as both. If I have a mole of water reacting with another mole of water, I can produce a mole of H3O plus and a mole of OH minus. In this case, let's say this one went here, this went here. This is acting as an acid, this is acting as a base. Strong acids and strong bases, which that is another thing you will have to memorize your identity of your strong acids and strong bases, completely ionize in aqueous solutions. So, for example, HCl is a strong acid. When I put HCl in solution, it will form H plus ions and Cl minus ions. You could also write that with water if you wanted to. You can write HCl plus water, giving you H3O plus and Cl minus, same thing, but completely dissociates, completely ionizes. We have no more HCl present. We only have H plus ions and Cl minus ions present in solution. Weak acids and weak bases, however, only partially ionize in aqueous solution. Acetic acid, very common weak acid, so it makes up the smell in vinegar when put into water we use what we call equilibrium arrows and this gives me acetate and h3o plus what's happening here and the reason i use what i call these equilibrium arrows is because this reaction is in equilibrium. It's reversible. It actually goes back and forth. So some of this reacts to form acetate and um, hydronium ion, and some of this reacts to form the other direction. You do need to be able to write and balance acid-base reactions. So acid-base reactions, again, acids will ionize in water to form H plus ions. We call these protons. You can also write H3O plus, but you need to be able to recognize it as H plus or H3O plus. Chemists use this completely interchangeably. We don't even think about it. We just do it naturally. If I'm doing this and I confuse you guys in class, or if you have questions, just ask. I do not mind clarifying, but we do use these interchangeably. 
bases will actually dissociate to form hydroxide ions. So some bases, like ammonia, do not contain hydroxide ions, ions. They actually form them by reacting with water. But other bases, such as sodium hydroxide, breaks up into Na plus ions and OH minus ions. So the rest of this parts on this slide, you'll really get in first semester. So neutralization reaction. What is a neutralization reaction? Basically what's happening when you combine an acid and a base together, they undergo what we call a neutralization reaction. Acid plus base is going to give you salt plus water. The question is, what's the salt and what's the water? And that's what you're going to work on finding out. If I have hydrochloric acid, HCl, and sodium hydroxide, NaOH, these are going to react in water. And they're going to swap partners. So it's a double displacement reaction. I'm going to produce NaCl and H2O, hence salt and water. Now, most of us know sodium chloride is salt. That's pretty straightforward for most of us, but there's a lot more things than just sodium chloride that can be identified as a salt. What if I have oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide? Oxalic acid has a chemical formula, H2C2O4. Now, you'll get more of this as you go through the class, but both of these protons can leave. If I react this with sodium hydroxide, swap ionic partners here, this is going to form Na. C2O4 plus H2O. This is aqueous. This is liquid. These do have to be aqueous phase to be able to react. That's an acid-base reaction. And the driving force is the formation of that water. This is a salt. Now, the trick is, this is not balanced. I need to balance this reaction. So if I look at this, I have two hydrogens here and one hydrogen here. I only have one on the other side. How am I going to balance that out? I'm going to put a two over here. And that's going to give me a two here. And now my hydrogens are balanced. But there's one other major mistake. Did you guys catch it? When I split this up, and we're going to talk about more about practicing the molecular um, and not ionic equations in just a sec for this exact reason. When I split this up, this becomes 2H plus and C2O4 2 minus. This becomes Na plus and OH minus. What that means is I need two sodiums for every one oxalate. Now my reaction is balanced. You have to be careful about that and diligent about that when you're doing the calculations. It's really easy to just try to write out your product without thinking about what are these actually breaking up into. We're not having you write out molecular equations because we think they're fun um, or not ionic because we think they're fun. We're having you write them out because we know that students will often make that mistake where they forget to check and then they forget to balance it properly and then they can't figure out where they went wrong in the calculation. So with that in mind, let's write the molecular equation, total ionic equation and net ionic equation for the um, reaction of sodium hydroxide and nitric acid. 
Sodium hydroxide is NaOH. Nitric acid, HNO3. Your molecular equation You've got sodium hydroxide, nitric acid, and they're going to swap partners. So from this, I'm going to get sodium nitrate and water. Again, the driving force of this reaction is the formation of water. Let's write out your total ionic equation. Remember, total ionic means that you're going to write out every species broken apart into the individual ions if they're soluble. So anywhere you have a Q is going to be broken up. Solids, liquids, and gases do not get split apart. Na plus plus OH minus, plus H plus, plus NO3 minus, giving me Na plus, plus NO3 minus, plus H2O liquid. Next, I want to go ahead and write out my net ionic equation. For the net ionic, you're only going to write the, the species that are still present after we remove spectators. So you want to remove spectator ions. As a reminder, spectator ions are the species that are on both sides of the reaction in the same phase. So what I mean by that, I'm going to go through the entire reaction and look. And I'm going to say, okay, I've got a sodium plus here. I've got one mole of sodium plus here. That is a spectator. It's not participating in the overall driving force of the reaction. I've got a mole of hydroxide here, and I don't have any hydroxide on the other side, which means hydroxide must be involved in the overall driving force for the reaction to occur. I have a mole of H plus. I don't have any H plus on the other side, so I'm going to write down H plus because that is also not a spectator. I've got a mole of nitrate ion and a mole of nitrate ion. That is a spectator. It is on both the reactant and product side. And lastly, I have nothing left on the um, reactant side, but I have one mole of water on my product side. This is my net ionic equation. You will find any time, you will find any time you do a reaction with a strong acid and strong base, this will be your net ionic equation. You may have a different ratio, like you may have two moles of base or two moles of acid, depending on what if you're using a monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic acid in here, or base in here, uh, or monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic acid, or if you have more than one hydroxide in your base source. But the driving force of an acid-base neutralization reaction is just that. We're neutralizing the acid in the base to form water, because water is neutral. Let's use that information that we just found, the molecular equation specifically, to answer this question. What volume of a 0.25 molar nitric acid solution is required to completely neutralize, um, and I forgot to put this in here, I apologize. This should say 0 0.200 molar sodium hydroxide. In order to solve this, we do need the balanced equation. So we saw before we had sodium hydroxide reacting with nitric acid in a 1 to 1 molar ratio forming sodium nitrate and water. 
So I want to know what volume, which means I want to know number of milliliters. I'm starting with a 0.25 molar nitric acid solution, and I'm trying to neutralize 32.7 mils of a 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Neutralize, that is a specific term for acid-base chemistry. I have a base, and I want to bring it back down to a neutral pH. We'll deal with pH a lot in second semester, but you are gonna learn about titrations this fall. And the word neutralizes specific terminology for when we do that in a reaction. So I'm going to write down what I want to find. I want to know the number of mils of nitric acid. That should say mils, not moles. And I know that I have starting with a 0 0.200 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, which I know I can rewrite as 0 0.200 moles of sodium hydroxide per one liter of sodium hydroxide solution. I'm trying to neutralize 32.7 milliliters of this solution, which is the same as 0 0.0327 liters of sodium hydroxide solution. It would be beneficial if you could quick learn how to quickly convert between mils and liters in your head. It'll just save you time in these calculations. You can write it out, that's fine. I don't mind, but it's just going to take time that you may or may not have when you're under the stress of some type of an assessment. If I was to stop at this exact moment, this would cancel out my liters of hydroxide, and I now have moles of hydroxide. Now that I have moles, I can go ahead and use my balanced equation to convert over to moles of nitric acid. I know I have one mole of nitric acid for every one mole of sodium hydroxide that's being um, neutralized. So every mole of nitric acid that I need neutralizes one mole of sodium hydroxide. This cancels out my moles of sodium hydroxide and now I have moles of nitric acid. But I want milliliters. We can use molarity to find our milliliters. So remember this, normally we write this as 0 0.250 moles of nitric acid per one liter of nitric acid. But I can also write that the other direction. I can say this is equal, or um, that the quantity of one, this is equal to one, one liter of nitric acid to 0 0.250 moles of nitric acid. If I flip it that way, it cancels out my moles of nitric acid and leaves me with liters of nitric acid. Then at this step, you can do it in your head or you can write it out. I'm going to just write it out for you guys to make it a little easier. I do want this in milliliters. So how many mils of nitric do I need per one liter of nitric acid? And when you complete this calculation through, you should find your answer to be 26.2 milliliters of nitric acid. Why three sig figs? Hopefully you recognize you had three sig figs here. We had three sig figs here. And we had three sig figs here. This is an exact conversion. So it does not limit our sig figs. This is also an exact conversion. And you guys have solved it and told me, you can now tell me successfully that you need 26.2 milliliters of a 0.25 molar nitric acid solution to completely neutralize 32.7 milliliters of a sodium hydroxide solution.